Hey guys, uh, as always, thanks again for being part of a life group. Uh, we are so grateful that you have chosen to carve out this time to be together, to, to gather around God's truth and to just hang out and uh, do life together. So thanks for uh, being a part of that. We're in session three of a series called The Wisdom Way, and we've been looking at the book of James, and man, it's been, a, it's been a great joy this summer going through the book of James, just being challenged with such practical truth. And in this series, we've really been digging into how we make our decisions and the fact that there's two options in life. There's God's way and there's the world's way. The world's way is consumed with ourselves and with the enemy and all these other things. And God's way is, is very clearly defined through Jesus Christ alone. And we've been talking about that in our lives, every one of us have decisions that we have to make. And we can either choose to make them under God's truth or in our own way. And so in the last two sections, we've talked about how to live in God's wisdom. And so I want to ask you the same question that I've asked you for the last two weeks is how do you make decisions? Like in your family, in your marriage, uh, in your life, how do you decide what it is that you're going to do? As you're making those decisions, do you ever stop and ask God, what do you want, God? Do you ever ask God, what is your will in this, God? Um, because I think if we are honest with ourselves, if you're anything like me, you kind of are compulsive, right? You see it, you want it, you decide you're getting it. You decide that's what you're going to do and you just do it. And, and you don't ever step back and go, okay, God, what is it that you want me to do here? What is your will here? And I'm not talking about being over the top about it, but in our decisions and in our lives, are we seeking the truth of God? You know, one of the crazy things is as we daily are pursuing God in our relationship with him through his word, that wisdom of what the decision needs to be seems to be much more clear and evident and overflowing in our lives. But as we suppress our relationship with God and we're not in his word and we're just allowing the world and all the things that come with it to, to influence us, our decision-making begins to be bent that way. So how are you making your decisions? Are you stopping and asking God, what is your will, God? What is it that you want in this? Because life is so fast-paced and we're making decisions constantly. And so often we step back and we realize, I have not been making my decisions in accordance with what God wants. My decision-making has been completely and fully consumed with what I want and what the world has been teaching me. It has been the thing I've actually been worshiping. It's the question we asked last week, what in your life has taken God's place? You know, wisdom, making decisions in a, in a godly way really are about that. Who is at, in essence, the throne of your life? Who is sitting in the throne of your heart? Is it, is it the things of this world? Is it yourself or is it Jesus Christ? Because if you're anything like me, it's easy to slip back into my old ways and begin to depend on myself too much, begin to think I know how to make this decision and neglect God's truth and God in all of those decision-making processes. We're gonna continue in this session and I wanna read James 4, verse 13 through 17 to you guys. These are some really interesting verses, but they're challenging. He says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this city, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? He asked the question. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. <laughs> wow. Hey, thanks for the encouragement there. I mean, uh, this could all be over any moment, he is saying. Instead, instead of, instead of thinking about always what's next, instead you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. Wow. As it is, you boast and brag. All such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin. 
Here are some really interesting verses because when you read these verses at first, you think, okay, God doesn't want me to plan. He just wants me to fly by the seat of my pants. No, 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 no. That's not at all what he's saying, but he's saying you and I have the tendency to get so comfortable thinking that we're in control. And he reminds us in these verses that we could vanish in a moment, that God is God and we're not. We're simply human beings. And everything in our lives could be gone in a second, but yet God holds everything in his control. And as we're seeking the things of this life, he says, instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. It goes back to what we've been talking about this whole time of wisdom is are we seeking God's wisdom in our planning? Are we seeking his kingdom first and and, and how he will lead our lives? And then also the challenge here is, are you ready for his return or are you ready for the end of your life? I know that's not very exciting to talk about. Well, the end of your life's not. The return of Jesus is obviously very exciting. But he's reminding us that we are vulnerable, that we are fragile, and that we in this life desperately need God in every single way even in our decisions and where we will go tomorrow, what we will do, where we will carry on business. You know, we can become so confident in ourselves that we begin to push God out. Has it ever happened in your life? Has it ever happened in your life where you got caught up in just the rhythm of life and you began to forget God even factored into your decisions, into what you were doing, that God actually holds your tomorrow, your next year, As I read these verses, I just want to take a minute to kind of allow us to process for a minute. In your life, is God truly the one you are seeking your direction from? Are you stepping back every day and thanking God for the day that you have, for what you've been given, and honoring Him with it? That's really what these verses are challenging us is as we live a life, we must live it under the wisdom of God's truth and under the surrender of Jesus Christ because everything is hanging in the balance. He is in control. We are not in control at all. Even though we think we are, we're not. And when we live in this place of surrender, it's an incredible, powerful place of trust to live with God. It actually reminds me of Matthew 6, verse 24 through 33. I want to read these verses As Jesus is teaching his famous Sermon on the Mount, this is what he says. He says, No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You cannot serve both God and yourself. You can't serve God and the things of this world. He says in verse 25, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who are you by worrying? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow will be thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And I love this part. Your heavenly father knows that you need them. It's not that God's saying you don't need clothes or food or anything like that, but where is your focus? Verse 33 and 34, man, these are powerful. But seek first the kingdom, his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things, all these things that we get consumed with, will be given to you as well. God knows you need them. God knows you need a job. God knows you need a house. God knows you you need education to provide for your family and all these things. But when we seek first his kingdom, when we're asking, Lord, what is your will? 
When we're saying, God, how should I make my decisions under, under your power, under your direction? I'm gonna give you all these things, he says. Verse 34, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. As Jesus is giving these words, it's powerful, the connection between these and the verses in James we just read, because we so often push God out without even realizing it. In your life, where are you getting your direction? Where are you getting your wisdom? Imagine if you and I began to truly seek our wisdom from God. If we began to seek his kingdom above all things. You see, it's not as complicated as it seems because when we seek first the kingdom of God with everything we are and everything we have, God's wisdom is clearly given to us. He shows us the way. So in your life, in your marriage, in your family, how are you making your decisions? Are you seeking first the kingdom of God? I hope you and your group have an awesome discussion. Thanks again for being part of a group.